All right, we are recording. Welcome everyone. We're going to have people hopping on as we go, but we are so excited that you're here. We're going to have such a fun night tonight. We have a killer lineup of leaders. Hopefully you think it's killer. We think it's killer and we're super excited to be here. And um, we just have a couple quick announcements. We're going to do a little a brief introduction so that you kind of know who you're talking to. What's awesome about tonight is that we have a ton of teams represented here. So there's going to be new faces that you're probably not used to seeing and hopefully you can gain some new perspective. We all bring something different to the table and we all have a different story when it comes to our leadership journey with Beachbody. So a couple quick things that you guys should already know about but just to make sure Bod Groups has launched. This is an incredibly exciting tool. I think one of the things I'm most looking forward to about this is my ability to connect with my assigned customers that you get through Success Club. I feel like it's such an easy way because previously free leads typically don't respond to me via email. So this I'm, I can already see is going to be a better opportunity to connect with those people. Um, but go ahead and get your group started. Go ahead and start dabbling in there. You want to be familiar with the platform because it is all the hype right now. And as they're working out bugs and kinks and things like that, be patient because they will make it foolproof here within the next few weeks. So definitely get your, your feet dirty there. Another thing to note is our summer strong sale right now is on challenge packs. So that's an incredible value. Like it's great for your current client database because let's say somebody started out with Bob, but they're really not seeing the results they want. Might be a great time to get them started with 2B mindset challenge pack or ultimate portion fix challenge pack. Think outside the box, like three day refresh. There's so many great tools in the summer strong sale that we want to make sure to be utilizing that on our social media, to our current database, to new people, follow-ups, all the good stuff. So the last thing, show of hands, who is ready for Mixed Berry Energize? Are you excited? I cannot wait um, for that to launch on the 18th. So mark your calendars, make sure you're gonna order it right away. As the leaders, it is our job to make sure that we are talking about it, getting excited for it, and because that's how our current clients and our current team are gonna to wanna to be a part of it too. So enough about that. Those are our announcements for the week. Um, my name is Rachel. If, for those of you who don't know me, um, I'm the founder of Restoration Nation, and we have um, a, a group of ladies here tonight that are gonna be speaking, and we are all a part of a two to four star diamond chat, and a few weeks ago, we kind of put our heads together and have been brainstorming mentorship ideas and just ways that we can support each other and our, our, our teams um, and learn from each other. So we're going to unmute ourselves and share a little bit about um, our story because we are, again, very brief, but we're coming from different spots. At the end of that, I want you to be ready to unmute yourself and ask the questions that you have for, if you have one for a specific leader, you can dir direct it towards them. If you wanna just ask it to the panel, we'll kind of unmute ourselves and answer as we go. Um, but again, my name is Rachel. Um, I've been a coach for three and a half years. I've lost 140 plus pounds with Beachbody. It changed my life. Um, and more than anything, it's given me a purpose outside of motherhood. I have two young boys. Um, they are two and five and all kinds of boy. I mean, our house is chaos every single day of the week. Um, I left my insurance and billing administrative position um, a couple of years ago and I've been doing this full time ever since. It has given me a passion I didn't know I had. So that's a, a brief bio. I'm married to a, a youth pastor. We have young kids. We just recently moved. We live in High Point, North Carolina. So we were a 2020 premier team. I'm a lifetime four star and then one star in my second business center. Um, and I love this business. So who wants to go next? Go ahead. I'll go. Okay, go. Thank you, Rachel. Um, so my name is Karen Buggy, and I um, live in the Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania area. Our team is Fit Girl Inc., and we are a three-star um, lifetime team, and my husband's account is a two-star. I've been a coach for five years, and I didn't really start coaching until about two years ago. So up until then, I was just a diamond by myself doing my own thing. And it was two years ago whenever I flipped the switch and I said, why am I not actively building a team and working this business? And then once I flipped that switch, the rest is history. So um, like I mentioned, I, lived in, I live in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I have three kids and um, Aiden, my oldest is actually gonna be turning 15 here, which is so crazy. It is so, so crazy. 15 um, and my, uh, middle son is Kellen. He's 13 and my daughter is 11. And we are a busy sports family. 
I love to be able to just balance and juggle this business with my family because it makes me a better mom, truly. Um, prior to being a beach body coach, I worked in corporate America. And once I got pregnant with my first, my husband and I knew that we, I didn't want to go back to work, but I thought I was just going to stay at home and be a stay at home mom. And I shortly learned after we had three kids in four years that I didn't just want to be that. And I dived into coaching. And as I became a coach and grew throughout my personal journey, I realized that it was much more than fitness. And the business actually has been a bigger gift for me, even though the fitness is what initially drew me in. So I love, I love, love, love the personal growth in this business. And um, I'm really excited to be able to connect and share with you all just a little bit of what we know from our experience as coaches, but also how you are just steps from being there as well. So thank you so much for joining tonight. I appreciate it. Next. Awesome. I'll go ahead and go. Hey guys, my name is Amanda Sobel and I live in Clearwater, Florida. And that is on the West Coast. I'm originally from the East Coast of Florida. I lived in Pennsylvania, I lived in Alabama. So my team is kind of spread out around the East Coast and Midwest of the US. But my team is fit as flock. We have a lot of renditions of the flock that have transitioned over the years. We are a 2020 premier team and lifetime two-star. We're pushing uh, for five-star qual pretty soon, but really excited for our team. I've been a coach for about five years now. And um, this kind of just started as a way for me to get fit for my wedding day. And I was sharing along the way and people are like, what are you doing? Why do you look so good in your pants? So it just transitioned from naturally sharing my story and sharing wanting to get like wedding day ready to evolving it into an everyday lifestyle. Um, throughout the way, I transitioned careers. I left teaching a fitness studio, went into marketing, hated my marketing job, ended up getting fired from the marketing job. And the day I got fired, I called my coach and I said, maybe it's time I should take this a little seriously and go all in with the business. And that day I turned on my PD, I put my head down and I went all in into my business. And I'm a blogger part-time, but Beachbody is really like my full-time career, how I make my income and how I kind of center my life every single day. So excited to chat with you guys tonight. Go next. Yeah, Hi. go I'm Meredith Yana Shannis, and I have been a coach for just over four years. Um, my team is Mighty Fortress Fitness. I started coaching after, I was a couple months postpartum with my fourth baby. I have five kids, and they're nine and a half and under. I have homeschooled for the past three years before everybody had to and balance this business with it all. Um, but I started when I was like stuck, 25 pounds that just was not budging after my fourth baby was born. And I had been a gymnast my whole life. Prior to Beachbody, I coached gymnastics at Ohio State. I was an assistant coach for six years and decided to become a stay-at-home mom because all my babies were just crazy with the travel schedule and recruiting and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I realized I missed that something extra. Like I wanted, like Karen said, I kind of wanted something more and something for me because there's days where it just kind of feels crazy to see at home mom with nothing else going on. Um, so when I realized the potential that coaching had, it was like I found this team that built me up and was what I had all my life that I was like missing as a stay at home mom. So I decided to go all in when my husband, who had been a teacher, decided to leave his full time job to go back to chiropractor school or to go to chiropractor school. And so we spent the past three and a half years in Atlanta, Georgia, and he just graduated in March. We actually had a little graduation ceremony for him at our house because they couldn't hold his graduation. And um, we moved to Ohio in December and now to Pennsylvania in a month ago or six weeks ago. So it's been just crazy. Um, but throughout all that, this has been like an anchor for me. It's kept me sane and my fitness has always been up and, you know, having a, the healthiest pregnancy ever with my fifth baby and bouncing back better than ever because of Beachbody and finding teammates who are just like lifelong friends now has been such a blessing. And so, um, yeah, I'm really excited to get to chat with you guys and just hear your questions and see how we can help you. 
Bethany, your turn again. Hey, had to unmute myself there. Um, I'm going to give a little shortened version of my story because my story is really long. But um, I started my interest in health and fitness 10 years ago when I had stage four cancer and I had two little ones at home. Uh, they were four and nine months at the time. And um, I had some back pain, went to the doctor a couple of times and they sent me for an MRI and it turned out to be a very large tumor sitting in my sciatic nerve. So before that, you wouldn't have caught me in the gym, but after I um, found out I was in remission, I was like, I have not just beat cancer to sit on the couch at home. So I started doing triathlons and did what's called a century ride, which is a hundred mile um, cycling event in one day um, through Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. And during that time, I also started teaching at our local YMCA and got certified to cheat, to teach there. Um, I loved doing that, but I was continuing to have some health issues of my own. Um, the radiation from the cancer had done some internal damage and ruined my immune system. Um, and I've since been diagnosed with a, an immune disorder and I essentially don't have an immune system. So going into a gym is not a possibility for me anymore. And around the time I started having some health issues, my upline at the time started reaching out to me. But I was too good for Beachbody, I thought. Um, the at-home workouts didn't work and I did not need Shakeology. So 22 Minute Hardcore was coming out and I thought that looked amazing. So <laughs> instead of telling her that I was going to, to buy this, I knew she would try to talk me into more. I went on her website and bought 22 minute hardcore DVDs. $39.95 base kit. Um, that was all I was getting. Well, she put me in her challenge group and within three weeks, I knew I had to try Shakeology and I wanted to coach. So I signed up to coach. Um, I hit Emerald within about three or four weeks of signing up. Um, I've hit success club from, I think my fourth day as a coach on and again I was already kind of in that industry so I had some credibility there but it was just a matter of starting to get in there posting what I was doing um I was posting my workouts because I was you know doing 22 minute hardcore so um that was four years ago in 2016 that I signed up so I just hit my four-year coach anniversary um I'm a one-star diamond and those two little ones that I had when I was first diagnosed with cancer are now, one will be 15 next week and one will be 11 in June. And we have since adopted twins from foster care. And that was just finalized on April the 8th of this year. So we are busy. We also homeschool and I own a meal prep business that I just bought this past July from my big little brother. He's a bodybuilding comp competitor. So he might be seven and a half years younger, but he's certainly not little. So we stay busy, um, but I love this. I took some some downtime because of my health again um, before I was just before I was diagnosed with the immune disorder. So I'm really just now back to running. My coaches are running. And I'm really excited to be working with these other coaches. They are pushing me more than they probably know, and I'm really looking forward to this call tonight um, as well. To teaching you guys and also learning from you as well, because it always works that way. Great. Love it. Okay. So we do have one question in the chat and I want y'all to be ready to unmute yourself and ask, um, but I don't want this one to get lost. Okay. So this is for anybody who wants to answer. Um, I fell off. Uh, Alyssa says I fell off posting for a few months after having my son. I'm seven months postpartum now and I'm ready to jump back in fully with coaching, but I'm struggling with posting on social media with the fear of judgment from others. How did you break through, break through that barrier? Anybody want to touch on that? Go ahead. <laughs> Karen, you want to? So when it comes to posting on social media, the best advice that I can offer you is to be thinking about your avatar, your person that you want to talk to, and realize that if someone's judging you, they're probably not your people. They're probably not your people. And the best thing that you can do for your business is to be consistent in sharing. So a couple of things to go back and, and consider. Who are you wanting to talk to and who do you want to work with? And then over the course of that week, over the course of your weeks, strategically plan out stories 
that relate to you and your talk and talk to your people so that you can share bits and pieces throughout the course of um, of the week because you want to be consistent. So you you took a break from posting. I wouldn't do that again. I would commit to being consistent from here on out and plan it out so that it doesn't come, you know, like tomorrow's going to come. What are you going to talk about tomorrow? And have that strategy in place and then just commit to making that post happen because it is part of your business. So put some strategy behind it. Don't be, um, I mean, people are always going to judge. Someone is always going to have something negative to say. That's just the nature of it. But I wouldn't think too hard about that. I would just continue to talk and share your truth to your people. Yeah, I think one of the best things that you can do to your following is to be honest with them. And if you've had a moment where you have not done your workout or you've fallen off track or maybe you ate a bag of Oreos, like tell people you're real and you're human and you have struggles and you have issues and you have things that they can relate to because nobody wants to join someone that's absolutely perfect. Like you see that and you're like, wow, that's not attainable for me. But when you're speaking your truth and you can relate your struggle to someone else, that's how people are going to reach out to you. And that's how you're going to find that connection with the people that want to work with you. So there's a lot of postpartum mamas that have probably gone through similar things. And, you know, I'm just a dog mom over here, but I see it with my girlfriends that have little babies and they're like trying to get back in the mindset and you're dealing with a new human that you just created and you're trying to balance everything else. Like undoing the dishwasher, doing your laundry, managing a crying baby, dealing with your husband, everything you have to handle in your life. But you have to be real about the struggle and show people that, you know what, guys, maybe you saw me take a little break, but I'm back and here's why. And I need you just as much as you need me and to share that realness with them. And that's how you're going to connect. There's so many coaches on my team that have left, come back, but when they come back, they're stronger than ever. And it's because they're sharing their truth and they finally found that depth beyond just posting a pretty picture, but it's them sharing their story. I would also say that mindset is where all that fear has to be conquered. And that's where personal, personal development is so important. And I would say not only personal development, but like writing out affirmations. I talk about that with my team a lot and just like taking time to make a list of who you want to be as a coach and as a person like I write my affirmations and say like I'm a calm patient mother like that's one of my affirmations that has nothing to do with business but that's who I want to be you know and if you're a coach and you want to be confident and successful and unafraid like however you want to phrase that write that and you start your brain starts to follow its suit with that and two of the best personal development books I can recommend for this one is um Failing Forward by John Maxwell that was like the second book I ever read as a Beachbody coach. And it's probably the reason I'm still a coach because I was so scared to post from the beginning. Like my heart would race every time I hit post and I would just run away. Um, and then the second one, Kendra Hall was supposed to speak at Summit this summer. Um, her book, Stories That Stick, helped so much because she helped, teaches you how to write your posts as a story that just is authentic. And it's how you would speak. It's drawing in your point about fitness or nutrition or whatever it is in a very authentic story that is going to make people feel like, oh, this is so easy to read. This is fun. I want to follow her and not be like, oh, she's trying to sell me something, you know, because that's not what any of us want. So good. Anybody else have anything? Go ahead, Bethany. I'll reiterate what Karen said as if somebody's judging you, though, they're not your people. Um, I have, I have judgy people that even to this day, four years in, after seeing the results I've gotten and how much this has helped me, both business wise and personally still make remarks those people sometimes they aren't they aren't going to go away and if you're not doing it their way then it's not right they're always going to be there you just have to move forward and if you think your posts are i mean if you don't want somebody to see them use that everybody can see this but this person and block them from your post if you really worry about certain people seeing them that bad or unfriend them. You can't do that to everybody, but you can do it to some people and I have done it before. Um, but seriously, don't worry. I spent a lot of time doing the same thing because I was coming out from a group X um, 
instructor and I was worried about what people were going to think of me down, now doing these at home workouts. And then I lost 42 pounds and that kind of, <laughs> that told them everything they needed to know. Uh, I would wrap up by saying, if you're not taking a stand for something, you're taking a stand for nothing. And in your business, you need to, to kind of stick, tick, stick your, your stake in the sand of like, this is what I'm doing and this is what I stand for. And when you allow that fear to seep into your mindset, you are allowing someone else's opinion to steal your future, you know, and, and to, to attest to the postpartum thing, like I get how scary that was. Cause that my second pregnancy, I was a coach my whole pregnancy full time. And then it, had gained 60 pounds, which was not the plan. And so after I had him, I, my business, and this is gonna, I hope this doesn't sound bad, but my business transformed after I had my second son because I got so in touch with who it was that I wanted to help. I wanted to help that mama who was seven months postpartum and felt so frustrated with her body because breastfeeding didn't help her lose the weight like Susie B down the street. You know, like it gave me something to connect with people about. Um, and I, so I just echo what they have to say, but just know that your greatest testament to your business is your story. And when you begin to craft that, everything else falls into place and you have that opportunity to impact someone else on the other side of that, of that phone who needs you in their life because you inspire them, not because you're perfect, but because of who you are. And it's just a really great opportunity for you to just be authentic. Um, okay. There was, hold on, there's some, anybody want to unmute themselves before we, and, and ask a question? There's a lot in the chat. I can dive in. Okay, go for it. Anna. Sure. Why not? Um, so my coach is Meredith. I'm so excited to be here tonight. Um, I've been a coach about a year. Um, loving it. Lost 70 pounds of beach body. Um, so now I'm getting into like the really cool part of starting to become a real leader and having like coaches that actually want to work the business. And as much as that scares the crap out of me, I'm really excited. However, my personality is I'm a go-getter. When Meredith sent me that first email of, hey, welcome, you're a coach. This is, you know, the first couple of things that you need to do. I took that and I just ran. But I know that that's usually not the norm. And this is not to toot my own horn, but it's just, that's what I've heard. Um, so the trouble that I'm encountering right now is because I have such a strong personality and I want everybody to run, but I also know that that's not going to be everybody's cup. How do I <clears throat> train my baby coaches to love this business the way that I do? but in a gradual way, because what I'm getting is I am so overwhelmed and because I'm overwhelmed, I'm paralyzed. And so there are 50 billion things that run through my head and what I end up doing is not taking action at all. Mm -hmm. I had, I'm having a hard time, me processing this because I'm like, how do you not take action? Like, how do you not do this? But that, and I understand that that's my flaw, but from you guys, since you are where I want to be, how do you deal with, being a mentor and pushing my coaches, but at the same time, respecting that maybe they don't want to go as hard as I want to. Mm. Can I, can I, I'll go ahead and start on that one. That's a good question. And I'm going to probably say that none of us know the full answer. Um, but I, so the first thing I would say is you cannot control whether one of your new coaches is overwhelmed or not. They, that is something that, that you can preface bringing on somebody and saying, Hey, you know, there's going to be a lot of information that comes your way. I am here every step of the way, and I'm never going to leave you. And just know that when you have a question, I'm available. You are their sounding board, their resource. Like, it's such an amazing tool for them to have a leader like you. Um, but if they get overwhelmed, that that's 50% on them. Sure, there's onboarding techniques and all of that, but, like, you know, at some point, you have to understand as a leader, like you can't take responsibility for that overwhelmed feeling. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, for me, I, it is, it's a, mm, it's a dance with new coaches, understanding what they need and how they need it and how to support them in what they need. I have some coaches that, 
jumped in two, with two feet and all arms and every piece of their body and was diamond in 98 days. And I didn't have to do anything. And then I have some coaches that really need that one-on-one -on -one guidance and support. That doesn't make one better than the other. Um, so I would just say up front, ask them, how can I best support you as you're launching your business? By opening that dialogue, you're, you're telling them, hey, it's okay to not know where to start, but how can I best support you? Can I check in on you? Would you like to send me your tracker? And I find most helpful for my new coaches is getting on a power hour. If I can get them on a power hour and do that with them, it just relieves a lot of the confusion out of the process of building the business. So that's my take on that. But I don't really know what I'm doing either. So <laughs> good luck. <laughs> Anyone else want to go? <laughs> Yeah, I think you have to realize that every coach has a different way that they approach their business. And you may have someone that comes in and they're like, yes, I want to coach and I want to go all in. And then when they see it, they get frightened and kind of run away. It's kind of like you see your shadow and you're like, oh my gosh, what's behind the corner? Maybe I should back up until I'm like, okay to approach. So you have to realize that you'll have coaches that go at different speeds. Um, on my team, we had a diamond that just popped in like two weeks. We have another one that popped in like a week and she's becoming diamond this week, but they were coaches before. Some were coaches for two, three years, and now they're just going into their own realm. They're just kind of breaking into that leadership. So know that everybody functions at a different pace and maybe not everybody is willing to work at that pace that you're at right now, but meet them where they're at. And I told my team this last night, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. So maybe working with different people, you have to find the approach that works for them. And when we are such go-getters, we see the business and we're like, how do you not understand this? Like, how, how are you not getting this and hitting success club immediately? But you have to take a step back and say, what can I do that's stopping them right now to help them get to that next point? Is it a fear of posting? Is it a fear of inviting? Is it something that they're not doing? Or can I help them do it better? How am I doing it? And how's it working for me? And how can I transfer this to my team? So they're applying all of those same things. So I think being really transparent with your team of like, hey guys, this is what I'm doing right now that's working in my business. Or, hey, who needs extra help with inviting? Why don't you send me your post and what you're sharing and I'll help tweak it a little bit. So giving a little bit extra handholding, um, but also giving them that push when they need it to say, you know what, your post in our challenge group was fantastic. Why haven't you posted that today on your, your page? So challenge and support, but also kind of like care and give them a push if they need it. I'll add something. Um, I think it was my grandmother upline, my grand upline said, run with those who want to run and walk with those who want to walk. I was one of those coaches. I jumped in with two feet and both arms. I finished the two week coach training within like three hours. And when I first started coaching, I expected that from my coaches as well. But I realized not everybody wants to do that. Not everybody's going to do that. I have one coach who signed up and hit Emerald later that day. And then others who have signed up and it's been a year and a half and they still haven't done any coaching, anything. And that's okay because there's a place for everyone on your team as well. If they don't want to run, and they want to maybe sign up a family member now and then, or they just want to be a discount coach. That's okay because there's a place for those and they are needed on your team. Mm -hmm. And you never know when somebody's going to go, you know what? I'm tired of being a discount coach. I think I'm, I think I'm ready to work now. And then they just go mm -hmm. and they know everything because they've been in your team page. They're familiar with beach body because they've been doing it for so long and they're able to run with you. But if you don't create huge expectations, make those expectations for yourself, but don't project your expectations for you onto your coaches because their goals are completely different than yours. Anybody else want to go? You good? Karen, did you want to go? I think it's, I think everything has been said. There's um, the Enneagram test that you can do. Um, really become a good listener and realize that your why and your goals aren't necessarily your coaches and listen to what they want. Why are they wanting to coach? 
And if they are saying they want to, you know, make a six figure income, then that expectation for that coach is going to be different than someone that just wants to do it as a hobby and make a hundred dollars a week, maybe. So I think becoming a good listener and knowing what their why is, is, is really important as you are leaving a team. And, and to, uh, one thing I did just think of, what you can do to, new coaches want to feel like they're doing something right. There's a lot of things where they feel like they're not doing anything right at all. If you can find creative ways to recognize them privately or within your team that aren't necessarily Success Club or Emerald or the mm -hmm. only, which is you know company wide what we recognize. You know if you see them have like a really killer transformation post and you know how hard it was for them, just screenshot it, put it in your team page, and celebrate it. Like find other ways that you can celebrate them outside of just X Y Z achievements. I second in. You, Graham. That has helped me mm -hmm. so much as a leader, for sure. Uh, mm -hmm. Anybody else? That was a great, really great question. Thanks for asking that. Mm -hmm. um, anybody else have uh, one they want to unmute and ask? You know you do. Come on. Don't be I do. Okay, let's hear it. Okay, um, it was also dropped in the chat, but. I am inviting girls who I truly see they could do the whole coaching business. Um, their words are powerful. They reach a lot of people. And when I invite them, I say those things about them because that's how I truly feel. And I'm being authentic that way, but they don't see it in themselves. How do you encourage them to get out of that small mindset and to do something bold? Good question. <laughs> Who wants to go first? <laughs> I'll go. Yeah. I think if in the event that they're truly your people and you really think and believe in, in them in that way, that you continue to plant the seed. You continue to share that part of your story that makes you believe in them because most likely there's something about you that resonates with them and it will click through consistency. Um, I don't know if any of you guys are like me, but sometimes I'm stubborn and bullheaded and I need to hear things and see things about 500 times before it actually, you know, it clicks and I get it. So I think that it really comes across in you being consistent and checking in with them and connecting with them on their wall um, so that they can then ultimately get that belief. I would also say, helping them to understand the bigger picture, that it's not just about them and it can not just be about them, where like they have the opportunity to help other people. And if you can think about like, look at how you have been transformed by this. Think about people in your life that could benefit from this too. Like, I don't know them, you know them. They're gonna relate to you, they're not gonna relate to me. I think that that's one of the most powerful ways to help people kind of open their eyes like, oh wow, this really is a business about helping others that's not just like I want to get my results and stay in my own little safe bubble here you know because then that way they know there's people who you know if somebody else lost 50 pounds and was able to keep up with their kids or didn't have to take all kinds of medications anymore their life would be better and they would be the one to be thanked for it I also think it has to do with personality type um you know and, and it goes back to the Enneagram I don't know how much you're into that but as a type two on the Enneagram I want to like know that people need my help that's what makes me happy um and I need to feel needed uh, if, if she's a type three but she just doesn't have the confidence then if you go into the conversation with like I want to run to the top with this business and I see you as my sister to do that with that's going to relate to a type three on the Enneagram um, so you just kind of have to figure out what their personality is and how, what speaks to them and their needs. Um, and just don't ever give up on them. Truly. Some of my best coaches are people that I just never gave up on. So everybody has a place. Good question. Any other, any other leaders want to add on that before we move on? You good on that one? Okay. Um, there was one that we missed earlier. Starting out with your business, how did you overcome the fear of inviting and not only then, but now with the pandemic, how, uh, let's start there. Cause it's a two part question. How do you overcome the fear of inviting, especially now during a pandemic? Who wants to talk about that? Amanda. I'll, yeah. I'll go. So, oh, okay. Go ahead. Sorry. Okay. Go ahead. No, you, you go. <laughs> okay. 
So I like to approach with new coaches, um, sharing their business and sharing their story. I don't know if I paused. We can hear okay. you. You're good. Okay, good. My computer screen froze. Um, I like to start with my new coaches kind of in a way of creating their personal blog, not like creating a separate fitness account, but share your journey along the way, because what's more inspiring when you are starting your journey, whether it's your fitness or your business is not just the end result, but the steps that it took to get there. You see a transformation picture and you're like, wow, that is crazy. I, I used to use Rachel's transformation pictures years ago because I'm like, man, that girl has an insane transformation. But seeing the work that goes behind it is so much more powerful. You see the effort, the sweat, the tears, and it's the same thing with the business. People are going to see you show up from day one and they're going to watch your little success along the way, like step after step. And then when you hit a milestone, they're going to be like, oh my gosh, I've been seeing you on my Facebook all the time. I've been seeing you on my Instagram all the time. So I think it's just a matter of knowing that those little steps do compounds. And I love the book, The Compound Effect. I think that had a really big transformative um, role in my business a few years ago is knowing that every single action that you take, be it small, is going to pay off in the end towards your bigger goal. So you just have to start with inviting one person because if, if you don't talk to that person, somebody else is going to. And if you don't reach out to them, somebody else may ask them later on. And by the time you have the courage to do it, they're already gonna be a coach. They're already gonna be on somebody else's team. So sometimes you just have to eat the frog and go with it. Karen, you want to go? You said it perfect. But um, just to add upon that, I know that if you flip the switch and put it on yourself that you are doing them a disservice by not inviting, everything changes. If you take the focus off of yourself and put it on them and realize what a gift the fitness or the business has been for yourself and truly believe that you have a solution to what the person you're going to connect to needs, then everything changes. And then also simplify it. I was just, we did a power hour today and my invite has really just come down to how are you doing? It's amazing how people just want to tell you how they're doing. Instead of that five sentence invite that you're copy pasting and sending to people, instead going on their wall, connecting, checking out with them, and then a simple, thanks so much for following me. How are you doing? So take the fear off of yourself and really just project it on the person that you're talking to and giving them a gift versus you're spamming them or you're, you're, you're fear induced by something that you might be connecting with the wrong person. Honest to goodness, most people are kind people. <laughs> they really are. They really are. And the handful that aren't, they aren't your people and they just accidentally got into the mix and then you just move on. So Good stuff. Anybody else? Um, so I would add, last thing I'll say is the, for me, free groups are the best way for a new coach to peel off the bandaid of inviting because you're, you're giving them something at no cost. Um, so it doesn't feel weird. I also think you have to find out how you want to invite. You could ask all five of us and we're all going to give you a different way that we invite. And so you have to take the time to try different ways, whether that's a free group, whether that's a voice memo, whether that's a video, how do you want to go about that? Do you want to do all of the relationship building beforehand? Do you prefer cold messaging? Like what, how do you want to go about inviting? But at the end of the day, in order to build a business, you have to make that step. Um, and so ripping the bandaid off um, is all about a confidence thing. Like you just make it the first thing that you do when you sit down to do anything beach body. It's the first thing you do is your invites. And then the rest of it is easy. Um, so, okay. I know JD had a question. JD, go ahead and unmute yourself um, and then ask your question. And we have some more in the chat. We've got a lot of great questions. Can you unmute yourself? I'll get it. Unmuted. There you go. You're good. Okay. Okay. Hey, so my question as a dude in the business, I, I scroll through like all the folks watching this and I think there's three of us. I think there's three guys in here. And one of the things I run into all the time is guys are reluctant to try any change. They're, they're, it, we're good with what we do. I don't need your help. And chicks, when I go talk to them are like, dude, you're a pervert. Just want to see me in a bikini. And that, 
how how do we kind of break that stereotype? I mean, I I mean, four hundred of you ladies in here and three guys. I mean, what? How do we break through that stereotype that all we want to do is see you skimpily dressed and ogle you, vice? Hey, you know, I'm truly here to help out. Right. I uh, first of all, I love you're here. Uh, I think it's awesome. Um, I don't know whose team you're on, but I'm glad you're here. Uh, I, I, if I were if someone on your social media, so let's say I'm a female following you on social media. If you came out and were vocal about that, I feel like I do agree that you might be in a, a tricky position because you're right. A lot of men that I know that are in my circle are pretty hard headed, but I think that part, that's part of your story. Like you have to talk about that and in, in boldness on your social media and say, Hey, you know, I, I understand that most dudes, they're like this X, Y, Z, they want to change and they don't know how to get there. I'm your missing link. Like you present yourself as that missing link to those guys. Now, when from a female perspective, um, you know, I, my husband tried coaching for like a hot second and it, it like it did not work out. Um, he's a good man who loves me. He supports me. It's not his thing. Um, but I would, if I were following you, like I think about um, people like Jamie Fitzpatrick. He talks a lot about the, you know, from a business perspective, he leads with that and, and he doesn't, stereotype male versus female. Um, I would search for some of his trainings on YouTube because I do think there are some good ones for male focused on YouTube that I have watched before. Um, but he's a great person to follow for inspiration. But as a female following your page, if you just said, hey, this isn't about the male, gen the male female role. This is about wanting a healthy lifestyle. I feel better because of X, Y, Z. And that's what I want to give to other people. When you okay. leave with that, people shouldn't question that. Okay. That's just my I've, had a lot of, I've, I've had a lot of husbands and boyfriends like text me like, "Oh, she saw it. Oh, what are you doing? It's what? What? It's like, dude, relax, man. I mean, I'm, I'm perfectly happy where I'm at. I'm, I've got the greatest wife in the world. I mean, there, there ain't no. Oh. I don't, I don't, I don't give a shit about that stuff. It's just, but, right. but there's, I feel as a guy in this business, yeah, that is, I mean, you get punched in the head a lot. I mean, it, it's yeah. hard sometimes, and just trying to get some perspective from the other side of how right. we can fight that. How I don't know. I tell you if, honestly, with, with the way some guys act, it's it's warranted. I mean, I get it. A lot of my a lot of my partners out there. I mean, I, I understand. It, it, it's 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 real. But we've had great success running couples challenges. So okay. um, where we it, it it is a couple thing. It's a competition. There's like a twenty twenty five dollar buy in, and they compete as a couple to complete whatever program it is. Okay. And then whoever has the best transformation at the end of it, we all vote on it and then they get the, the pot. So we're doing one right now with 10 rounds and the winning pot is like $800. Wow. Um, so that pulls in dudes that wouldn't necessarily be okay. in because they're motivated by money. So. Gotcha, gotcha, that sounds cool, that's good. Sorry, I'm sorry I took up that whole question. And who else wants to talk? <laughs> I was just gonna add, my husband tried coaching as well for a while um, and it didn't work out, but it kind of projected him into what he's doing now, which is working out great. But um, you said you have a great wife that you love. Say that. Like, talk about that. And what Rachel said, like, this isn't about seeing you in a bikini. It's about you being healthy, being a healthy mom or a healthy wife. It's about you being a healthy husband. Guys are hard-headed. They are so hard-headed. Um, and Chelsea mentioned, I mean, Chelsea, I said that Rob Pearson, Chelsea and Rob Pearson is a good one. Um, Jamie Fitzpatrick that Rachel mentioned. And there's another one that spoke at summit year before last. And if I can find his name while we're on here, I'll throw it in the chat. Um, he was great. He's a male coach. He's lost a ton of weight and I just ran across him the other day and now I can't remember his name, but I'm going to look for him real quick and throw it in the chat, but you just got to persevere and go through, it's kind of what we were talking about, the worry of what people are going to think. Just some people are going to think what they're going to think no matter what. But not everybody's that, that way. And your people, male or female, female are out there. I would okay. say, I know this is not beach body, but I was a gymnast my whole life, which is a sport where you're going to play it hard. And you're, I mean, all my coaches were men. And that was something that I just grew up as normal. Like, I respect a man who is going to be helping me 
And when you come at it from that perspective of like, I am here to help you. I'm not getting anything from this except for I want to serve you and help you to get the results that you want and just be offering everything that we have in a really natural way. Like I think it's really important to showcase like more than just fitness too, like whether it's your family, your life, your wife, your business, like those are things that are going to, things that are going to draw guys there. Cause like what um, I think Karen said earlier is really talk to your avatar. Like your avatar is going to be something very different than mine. So like really get focused on like, who's your best friend? How would you talk to him about fitness? Who's somebody that like you really would want on your team who would run with you and create such a huge change for your life? You know, so just pretend like you're just having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with that person and put it in your post. Okay. I like that. <laughs> awesome. Great feedback. Thanks for asking that question. Um, don't give up because you... Oh, no, I'm not giving up. There ain't no giving up. up. Very passionate, and that will drive some good success. Um, so, okay, so moving on, we have a ton of questions in the chat. If, if you... If yours got buried, can you just go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question? Um, we can go back through. Yeah, Josh Spencer and um, who, what was the other male coach that was up there? Steven is, he's really good too. Oh. Who has a question? I know Jordan had one, let me go back. Okay, Jordan asked, how would you go from a couple of years of being a little more than a discount coach, not creating the business that you want and start building the business that you want? How do you forget the habits and mindset that you've had in your side hobby business to the mindset that can allow you to create the business that you really want? I'll let y'all go ahead and go with that. Whoever wants to. Anybody? Karen, Amanda? So just come out as a coach. Mm -hmm. I think that's the biggest thing that you can do is rip the bandaid off. And I actually have a couple of like my OG discount coaches that are on tonight that have been a discount coach for like two plus three years. And I just reached out to them and I think they see the passion and the fire and the excitement and the momentum that's breeding amongst our team. And that's lit a new match within our whole team and our whole business. And when you have excitement, people want to be a part of that. So find ways to reconnect, find ways to re-engage with your team and to bring those discount coaches back into that community. Um, my team functions very much as a community, like we're a sisterhood. We have a few guys. They're like usually husbands. I don't recruit any men in my business. Like we're a sisterhood and that's what we got going on right here in this jam. Um, but bring those people in and say, you know what, like I see the potential in you and you've been doing this for so long as a challenger why don't you start by sharing your story? Like, why have you stuck around for so long? And can you do me a favor and share that today? Like, I will help you write a post. Let's choose a picture. Let's get it out there. But you have something to share with people. If you've been he here this long with me, there's a reason for it. So we just have to go and do it. Um, so I hope that helps. But you also have to find a reason that they want to do it. Sometimes they just want a discount and that's it. But if they have a bigger reason for doing it, whether it's they see you're so excited, they see a transformation in somebody else, they see that it's possible for somebody else that just entered the business, that may be a reason for them to try. And there's nothing that you get from trying. If you fail, you get healthy, you get fit, you tried, and you make some new friends. That's it. No one's going to fire you. No one's going to be disappointed in you. It's just you saying, I'm going to go back to a discount or I'm going to give this a try. So that's it. Karen, did you want to add to that? All right. Okay. Um, and so, and I'll expand on this a little bit because I, I really would love to get um, feedback because I have a couple coaches on my team kind of in this um, position. So and this is my coach. So I'm going to expand just a smidge. Um, so she, so in this scenario, she's kind of been a hobby side gig coach, posting here and there, sharing her journey here and there. Um, and then in the past couple of months, it become a lot more consistent, but she didn't have that traction yet because it takes a little while to get that traction. Um, so what would you say when you're kind of in that discouraged headspace that this isn't going to work out for you and that you're not cut out for this business when it could possibly be a time and consistency puzzle that would lead to what they want? What would you as the other leaders say in that situation? I, 
I would say if there is time and consistency that has to develop and just like you are working with your fitness goals with creating meal plans and then following through with them and looking at your workout calendar and following through with it, it takes the same kind of dedication with your business and it's as much or as little as you want to put into it. But if you really want to grow a business, you're going to do the little things like finding new followers on Instagram, putting out a post, creating your Instagram stories, like doing things little by little and gaining confidence in those small things that are going to help you to attract the right people to you. And then you'll be able to just reach out a lot more easily because the people that you're that are following you, you feel like you can just have a regular conversation with. I don't know if that helps answer a little bit. Love that. Anybody else? I would say also just spend some time looking for those people, um, especially on Instagram. Find hashtags that are very specific to you. Um, this is just an example. If you like golf, um, don't just look up golf. Don't look up Tiger Woods because those are such big. Find a smaller niche that you're looking for. Go into that hashtag and then start following people from there. If you like dogs, don't just look up dog mom. Go to the specific breed you like. Um, if you have... I do twin mom a lot or, or mom of four girls because that's a little more unusual. Um, but go in and start following those people. And the training I've done, um, I've gone through it a couple of times, actually recommends following about 25 people a day um, on whatever platform you're choosing to use. So if it's Instagram, follow 25 there, not between that and Facebook. And just make those connections. Go comment on some pictures or just whatever you're doing to make those connections with the people um, so that you're not just going in, following, and then shooting out an invite, sorry about that, um, before you make any kind of connection with them. I would wrap it up by saying your joy is what will be contagious. I think at the end of the day, the number one thing that you can do for your business is to be so ecstatic about what you're offering people that they can't help but want to be a part of it. When you get on your Insta stories, and I can attest to this because I was in the Morning Meltdown 100 test group, and when my business was the strongest last year was when I was most excited, and I was most fired up, and I was most passionate. Um, and when I am rooted in that, my business thrives because people want to be a part of something that's happy and exciting. And now more than ever before in this climate that we're experiencing, that is, I really believe a huge piece of coach success is the joy and the energy and the passion that you are able to translate into your social media is what will bring people into your crew. Um, great question. I have a question for you, but just a shout out, Anna is on and she says she has her first person who wants to sign up and she doesn't know how. So Anna, if you're on, message your coach right now and they will walk you through how to sign them up. Um, if you don't have a sponsor coach that's on right now, message any of us and we will walk you through how to do a share cart. Easy peasy. We will get you set with that. Um, but Rachel, I have bragged to my team about your like bomb high SC numbers. And when you broke it down for me the other day, it made much more sense, kind of like biting the elephant in small pieces. Mm -hmm. So I think last month you hit like what SC 64 or something crazy mm -hmm. and you've hit like crazy high SC numbers before. So break that down to us a little bit more. I know you attribute a lot to the test group, but for a newbie that's coming in or any of us and we hear those crazy numbers, we're like, how did she do that? So give us the backstory on those crazy SC yeah. numbers. Um, so Success Club is my strongest um, I feel like in this business, because when I started, there was no coach training. There was no like fancy do X, Y, Z. I knew if I helped people, I would get commission. So I always focused on that. And, um, I think, so when I was in the morning meltdown 100 test group, I don't think that that was what 
changed my business. I think it was the two and a half years of consistency before that point. Um, because I had, you know, for two and a half years, I was not a crazy five-star coach. I wasn't premier. We hit elite, like th we, we missed elite three years in a row. Like, you know, on paper, I wasn't anything to like be crazy about, but for two and a half years, I invited every, every day, five days out of the week, I invited for two and a half years. And so when it came to the point where I had this insane transformation because I went all in with the program, it was a, a culmination of that. Now, so for example, April, SE 64, um, I, it was 10 rounds. La launch months are, are my jam because I have a strong client base. Um, and so when I look at launch strategies, while my clients, not all of them may stay on Shakeology forever, they know the value of a completion pack with a launch. And so it's super easy for me to hit high numbers because I have that trust and that fold that even if they're not going to be forever Shakeology people, they're like, heck yeah, every four months when a new program comes out, that's where I'm going to be. Um, I also have really taken the time in the last two years to figure out who I'm talking to. And I know that that feels really broad um, to say and, you know, find your avatar and find your niche. And like for most new coaches, it's like, what in the heck are you actually talking about? And so I had to sit down and, and say, what was it? Bef what was my life before Beachbody? And what is it like now? And that was my con that is, that's still how I approach my business. That's my content for coaching. That's my content for my challenge group guide. Like that's, that's the way I lead. And I, I really like, okay, for example, right now, last year I had a killer transformation. I had a six pack for the first time in my whole life. I gained 25 pounds since then. And not one day in that period of time, despite health diagnoses and things that I was facing, did I not show up on social media? There was never a day that I skipped, not when I was having a bad day and I was in the mood and my kids were horrible and I just wanted to go cry in a corner. I showed up every day, guys. That's when we talk about consistency in your business. We're not talking about, you're gonna, as a new coach especially, or even as a coach who's really trying to build that foundation for your business, those first six months to a year, it's freaking hard. <laughs> like you, you get way more no's than you get yes, yeses. And so you have to be, I heard this said by another coach, you have to create rhino skin, all right? In your business, you have to have rhino skin that first year because you're building the foundation for your future success. Yes, we all wanna hit big goals. Yes, we all wanna do big things, but you are building that foundation for your SC220 in next July, SC 64, next April, whatever it is that you're working towards, that first year, that first two and a half years, I've been here for four years. I've got four years of trust on my social media, and a lot of you don't have that. So you have to be faithful to the process, even when the results may or may not yield what you're expecting. SC was freaking hard that first year of my business. It was not even remotely close to being easy until after that one, one and a half year mark. I remember many a month, the la literally, I actually can remember the last week we were in Two Star Qual. I hadn't hit Success Club. We were about to lose Two Star in the very last week. And I was like, oh heck no, over my dead body, we have worked so hard for this. <laughs> This is not going down. I was, I, there was fire coming out of my keyboards because I invited every person with a heartbeat that day because that goal was important to me. Success club is not negotiable. It doesn't matter how many people I have to talk to, I'm gonna hit it. And I try to hit it by early in the month because if you leave it to the end, you're gonna be stressed as I'll get out trying to make that happen. But I pulled that out of my butt at 11, 58 the night before the end of qualification to the point where I had to dispute the fact that they said I didn't qualify. Um, but I, I say that to say that it's hard for everyone that first year. Um, and it can continue to be hard if you're not sharing authentically and really sharing in a way that is attracting the people into your tribe that um, really want to really want a change. Um, so is that, I hope that was what you wanted to hear. So. Yeah, I think that was perfect. And the phrase we like to use in our team is like a lot of people have microwave dreams, but it takes crockpot reality to get there. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you have to let things simmer and build that trust 
build that connection with your audience and you can't just expect an immediate result when you post a picture and you're like, I'm here, come and join my group. When you need to do a lot of the work behind the scenes, right. it's going to take you inviting people. It's going to take you reaching out to people and not just mm -hmm. expecting people to line up at your doorstep because you posted a cute pic for the day. Yeah. I also would add that you, so, okay. We have, how many people we have on this call? 42 people. You, there are 42 different ways that you can run your business. You have got, if, if anything that we say tonight, put blinders on and do not look at the coach and your team to the left or the coach and your team to the right. Because in the last four years, I have literally, I, there's so many people that started after me and have gone like way far, way farther in this business than I am. But you know what? I'm happy. I am continuing to work towards my goals. I don't let, I, we've missed elite three years in a row. Last year we had a premiere, which was so exciting, you know, and if I had quit when all these other people had, had done it before me, you got to focus on what your mission is and your goals. And literally, if it takes you twice as long as the coach next to you, who cares? You're still going to reach your goals. You just have to be consistent over the long time. It doesn't matter if it takes you longer. It, it literally does not matter. That doesn't make you less than the next person. Karen, did you have something? I was going to say something and then I do want to be respectful to time because I know it's, yeah. um, it's 930 already, but I think you guys are fantastic and the questions have been amazing. I love it. Um, but really when it comes right down to it, I think to add upon what you were just saying with success club and success in this business, define what success means to you, create your own game, but then also call yourself on your own bullshit because really any excuse that you have or I sent out a hundred invites and I didn't get one response. I mean, reflect and realize that if you want this business, you can have this business. Define what success means and do it. So if you think that it takes 50 invites in order to hit success club six and you hit 50 invites and you are success club zero, then you obviously got to reflect and figure things out and tweak and make adjustments so that you are able to hit your goal. Like you mentioned, um, Rachel, like you mentioned, Success Club is a non-negotiable. It's not a maybe kind of woulda, shoulda. It is something you have to do because it is the foundation of the business. And six is minimum, minimum, that you really should hit in the first week of your business month so that you can switch gears and think about the business versus Success Club. Because if all you're thinking about is Success Club on the 30th day of the month, like, you're not even being, you're not able to build your business. So the mindset has to match the hustle. The hustle has to have no plan B. And let yourself have fun with it and win along the way. Right, for sure. Like link arms with people like we're doing tonight. I mean, there are so many awesome, amazing people in this, in this community of Beachbody. It's, it's awesome. So if you're not with your jam or if your upline isn't helpful or you don't like Joe, you know, across the street, like it's okay. Find your people. Cause there are so many different people you can connect with to run this business with. So and I will, when I'm struggling with success club, it's not what I'm doing that month that is affecting me. It's what I did three it. months ago. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, so if you're not, if you're feeling that struggle of, Oh my gosh, no one's going to say yes. It's, it's a reflection of what you've done the last three to six months. Um, and, and that's when it hits you because you don't hit success club from an invite. You hit success club from a follow-up. Your invites are planting your seeds for your, your July success club points. Um, so just keep that in mind. We did have one question. Um, Ashley wants to ask, I want to share my story. However, on Facebook, uh, I am not sure that the people I want to reach are on there. I don't have a lot of followers on Instagram. Um, and some are the same friends I have on Facebook. What do you suggest? Do I just give it time? I'm a second time Beachbody coach and don't have any results from the program yet. Six months pregnant and no, I will definitely have before and after once I'm postpartum. Who wants to talk about that? I'll start with it, just breaking it down. Um, if your people aren't on Facebook, find your people on Facebook. You have 5,000 friends that you can find. Start to find your people and put them on Facebook. Friend request them. Friend request them. Same thing on, on Instagram. I mass follow on Instagram. And that's how I go about doing it. People might have a different approach as to how they're going about doing it, but create your social media to be your virtual storefront. 
if you're not talking to your the right audience then make it the right audience right so it's your store let whoever in your to your store the way you want it um you said do you give it time if it's not working for you tweak most times you don't need to change you just need to tweak so if you're only inviting five new friends on facebook and 10 new follows on instagram a day maybe 10x those numbers to 50 and 100 you know so again i think a lot of the times we overcomplicate what we need to do and we spend all this time in analysis instead of the actual do tweak and then make those um make the things happen um and then the last question you said i'm Second time B-Spotted coach and do not have the results from the program. I'm six months pregnant and know that I definitely have had my before and after once I'm postpartum. People aren't looking for the before or after. People want you, not Beachbody. So reflect on where you are right now and talk to those people, right? Wow. Beachbody, Beachbody does all of the selling. Guys, millions and millions of dollars. You don't need to sell a thing, all right? If you go and you knock on 10 doors in your neighborhood, nine of those 10 people have a Beachbody program, have tried Shakeology or Beachbody, like something Beachbody. Why shouldn't it be with you? So build up that confidence and start sharing your story and talking with your own people. And again, remember, you don't need to sell a darn thing. You really, really don't. You just need to talk to your people and find out who those people are. So that's where I would spend my energy and then get to work. And I would add, I said, I mean, I went through my fifth pregnancy from start to finish. I worked out on the day I gave birth. So, like, don't let the fear of, like, I need to be postpartum to start posting stop you. Because having a healthy pregnancy is so important. Like, right now, you can be sharing about, like, what you're doing is so good for not only you, but for your baby. And you're going to be able to recover better. Like, I remember being in the hospital. I'm like, I have to go for a walk. Like, I don't want to sit in this hospital bed. And that was baby number five. Like I was wiped out after my first. Like you have to just share what's working for you, whether it's fitness or nutrition or how you're overcoming pregnancy cravings or, you know, what is something that you're looking forward to with your baby. Like just tell your story. You know, you have so much to share. And then being able to show even modifications. Like I did so much with fit pregnancy and trying to talk about like, I'm still doing this. Like, yeah, I'm on my knees and barely moving at all on a push-up because my belly hits the floor while I'm going, but I'm doing it. And like, so many people are like, I can't believe you, like, this is so inspiring. And maybe they would never, they still haven't joined me, but you're going to be inspiring someone. And maybe somebody else is going to have a healthier pregnancy because they watched you through this. And yes, once you, if you are, like they were saying, what you're doing three months or now is going to impact you three months from now, six months from now. So when you are a month, six weeks postpartum, and you've been showing for four months that you're showing up and taking this seriously, even throughout pregnancy and giving birth, like I, I hit one star for the first time when I was having my, no, one of my star diamond qualifications was during the six weeks while I had the baby. So like you can still be growing hard at this. And sometimes it's even better because people will like help take care of you, you know, like people are bringing you meals and like somebody might offer to clean, like take any help that you can get, please. <laughs> like I want to just shout that from the rooftops, but know that like when you're showing up now for the next four months and then you start working out again, that is going to be when people are like, yes, I'm ready to join you. Like I've watched mm -hmm. you for four months and you're doing this now, you're postpartum, like this is your day one. I can relate to this day one. Like let's do this together. Yep. Uh, so I had a healthy second pregnancy and uh, people were more inclined to join me during that pregnancy than ever before because they're like if she is six months pregnant eight months pregnant and she's doing insanity max 30 I need to get off my rear end and go work out like there's no excuse for me if she's pregnant and doing it and I'm sitting on my rear end on the couch so just know that that I, I would I, I would do some reflection on why you think that your people are not on Facebook. Because for my coaches, when that happens, it's usually that they uh, are just afraid to invite who is on their Facebook. I'm seeing by your face, that's probably it. Um, so I have actually gone through with my coaches and ha done a Zoom call and screen shared. And I will go through their Facebook friends and I'm like, okay, have you invited so-and-so? No. And then they'll give me some excuse. And I'm like, do you want to change their life or not? 
And so I really want you to look at your, like, look at your social media. Is it actually that they're not your people or you're just like afraid that they're like mm -hmm. what they're going to think of you. So um, just do some reflection there. Cause that you might be surprised at who actually would want uh, your help. Mm -hmm. My client um, offline had her largest business growth when she was pregnant. Mm -hmm. Um, she just told her story and she had a very healthy pregnancy and then she didn't, she didn't bounce back. Like some people say, and that's okay because our bodies go through a ton and you don't have to bounce back. Um, that's normal. And just, I mean, share, be honest. Um, I think Rachel and I think Karen both said it. If your people aren't on Facebook or you think they aren't go find them because they are out there. Um, some of them probably already are there and the ones that aren't, you just got to go get. I would say too, strategically, like in that process of going to get them, like not just finding a hashtag, but also looking at accounts that like, I would go to Instagram and look at like, I don't know, Medela or, um, some type of really cute baby clothing or, you know, whatever the other moms or new moms are going to be looking at. Because if there's somebody who also liked something about, you know, the super cute sleeper that you love and want for your baby, that person might relate to you too. You can just follow them and start building that connection with somebody. Like you already have something in common with them. They like the same type of thing you do and they probably have a baby. So like there's two points. Maybe they're going to follow you back and start to fall, you know, fall in love with the idea of taking care of themselves the way you do. Love it. So good. All right. I think that's, we went over. <laughs> you guys are so good. We just love hearing from you. And maybe if this is a need again, we will, we will continue. If we miss some questions, make sure to share it with your leader. Um, and we can get you those answers, but this call is recorded. Um, I'll send it to everyone. Make sure everybody gets a copy of it, but seriously guys go out in, with confidence in your business. Now more than ever, people need us. Um, and they need you as the light to inspire them. Um, so you have that opportunity on your social media to be the light. Um, and that's our first role as coaches. And if we're doing that, then building all the business building stuff becomes so much easier. So you might have something they want me to say, are you good? We're good. We're good. All right. Thanks guys. We will see Thank you. Thank you.